Time now for the Educated Retirement Show with your host, Jay Kaplan. Jay discusses reverse mortgages and can answer your questions at 951-922-3532. Call lines are open at 951-922-3532. And now, here's Jay. Well, here is Jay, and Jay will answer your questions, but you got to call me first, 866 866- now let me give you this number, the call-in number, 951-922-3532, or Sean would say, our great engineer, 951-922-3532, something like that anyway. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the Educated Retirement Radio here on KMET, 1490 AM, where we, as usual, will be Ah, discussing retirement, how to best prepare for said retirement, and how to best stay happily retired. Now, today, uh, I had the kind of a light flu a week or so, a couple of weeks ago, I think you might remember, but I'd taken a flu shot, so I did pretty well, but now I got a cold. It's all my wife. I'm doing really well right now. Uh, but it hasn't always been that way, so bear with me if I stop talking. You know, I don't have any trouble talking unless it's a physical thing. So, uh, we today will be <clears throat> taking a movie like Swarm to the Smithsonian while Ray Bolger sells vacuum cleaners. Now, we had a guest, and uh, the guest had to cancel. Uh, for good reason and uh, since my voice is not guaranteed to continue don't applaud because of that Um, we're going to have a good segment from the past uh, kind of a synchronicity in a way because this person Randy uh, contacted me this morning and wanted something added for him and his company And all of a sudden, there's a need for Randy to be on the show. So uh, let me read you what he sent me this morning. And it is, discover how you can attain financial freedom among other life goals for your family through owning your senior care franchise. Others have done it. So can you. Uh, Register now. And register now to a free franchise masterclass tomorrow, Saturday, that's June 11th at 10 a.m. And here's how you find out. And I believe we're going to have one every couple of weeks. But take this number down and uh, 805-338-8100. That's 805-338-8100 or email at randy at oneheartcares.com. And that's the number one heartcares.com. And he is also at www.oneheartfranchise.com. So he can talk to you about other schedules like that. Now, the reason it's important is been talking to other people, potential guests, and some guests that have come back to try to really show all of us how important it is to stay busy, to stay engaged. Some things cost more money, some certainly don't. Most hobbies don't, or, well, I should talk. Records and electric trains, uh, astronomy, those things can cost money. Uh, so anyway, I just want to bring that up now and we'll be talking more about staying engaged as time goes on. So today, you know, we usually start with today is National Pizza Day or National Whatever Day. There was nothing really exciting. So I think what we're going to do maybe from now on on such days is take over the job of assigning days. So Sean will be like uh, the secretary of, you know, it's a cabinet level position in Washington, secretary of special days. 
So we'll start with today. And our first appointed day is not just national. Let's make this International Swarm Movie Appre Appreciation Day. Now, I'm not going to ask anybody if they saw that movie because I hope they didn't. But uh, we created that national day, international day here on the Educated Retirement Radio on KMET. That was an Irwin Allen disaster movie that was itself a disaster released in 1978. And it is listed in most places as one of the hundred worst movies ever, ever made. Now, you won't believe the stars that are in this. And that's why when I started seeing it on television, my wife, Kathleen, was watching it. And I said, why are you watching it? She said, look who's in it. Well, <clears throat> Michael Caine, and this is not like an exit strategy for Michael Caine because this is 1978. So it's not like he was going out as an old actor playing in first rate or in this case second rate horror type movies or creature movies this is about bees african bees so it said that michael Caine signed on only because of the others that he saw in the cast that had already signed on so he signed out without even reading the script and he enjoyed picking off and eating the little yellow spots on his clothing during the filming until he was told that the little, little yellow spots were actually bee poop. So Henry Fonda was an avid beekeeper in real life. And he was in there. Uh, Catherine Ross, we remember her famous, famously saying that Dustin Hoffman would never amount to anything. Richard Chamberlain was in it, who gave me a 25 cent tip when I waited on him at a place called Clementine's on Roxbury in Beverly Hills in the mid 1970s. Olivia de Havilland was there in the movie, Fred McMurray's last movie. This was his exit strategy. And of course we remember uh, his proximity to the Bohemian Grove that spoke that we spoke of a few weeks ago. Richard Widmark was there and Slim Pickens was in it, who probably wished he'd really been on that atomic bomb in Strange Love. Lee Grant and Jose Ferrer. So be sure to jump over to the YouTube channel link about halfway down the front page of the Educated Retirement Radio.com. So, and ask me for a free look at what may work for you. The reason is simple, it's education. The cost is zero, the time it takes is up to you. I do promise a fast and easy review so you know better what your options are and your information is always private and never taken advantage of. And uh, I need to take a breath, so let's take a break. Take it away, Sean, and thanks a lot. See you in a minute. All right, and speaking of selling solutions, I don't sell solutions, I give solutions. So knowledge is power. And speaking of power, you know, the other day I happened to be watching a special about Elon Musk at the first liftoff of his heavy, and when I say heavy, I'm not talking about me, rocket. And the special also showed his convertible in space. Now, I tried one of those convert. I take it that was the convertible, the first thing he came out with, and I didn't care for it that much. But I think it's great to have a, I, I wish he did a sports car again. But I can't say why, but I one thing I was kind of uh, obsessed with, I kept looking at, was how much tread there still is on the tires. And of course, don't panic, that was displayed on the dashboard screen. Now, <coughs> I would hope most of you out there know where don't panic comes from. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, written by Douglas Adams and published in 1979 and stretching to six books. 
So let me just do a quote from there that uh, probably, uh, probably encompasses myself as well. My doctor says that I have a malformed public duty gland and a natural deficiency in moral fiber. Well, I'm not sure about that. Ford, who is one of the uh, characters, muttered to himself and that I am therefore excused from saving universes. So if you need to save a universe, I, you know, I might be available, but probably not. And of course, who knows what 42 means? Sean, do you know what 42 means in this context? No, no. Oh, we got it. You know what? Another show, probably. But I remember asking some barista, some young kid making me espresso in, uh, what's the name of that city, Kathleen? No, up on the coast. Anyway, it's a very small place. We were joking around and I said, oh, Cayucos. <coughs> and he wanted to know if I had any other, if I wanted to know anything else. And I said, yeah, the meaning of the universe. And he just quipped right back 42. So we'll get into that another time. But it is Ray, Bur Bur Ray Bulger's birthday. He uh, popped in in 1904. And he took off in 1987, one of the greatest dancers in film, nicknamed Rubber Legs. And he worked as an insurance salesman and sold vacuum cleaners. So there, played the guitar, was an amateur astronomer. He was in films like Babes in Toyland, The Great Zigfield, did lots of voiceover for cartoons. And of course, The Wizard of Oz in 1939 which makes me want to talk about The Wizard of Oz and a lot of things from that time, but we won't right now. So Ray donated his costume from The Wizard of Oz to the Smithsonian, where it is today, and I just love the Technicolor in there. Now, Technicolor just doesn't mean just color. I guess it was the first three strip, which means three different cameras, of the uh, basic colors. There was two strips before that called Cinecolor, I think. In any case, I'm not a scholar on that. But I love the luck of Technicolor from that era because <laughs> it was not real color. It was kind of what we wanted real color to be. So Wizard of Oz and the Adventures of Robin Hood are probably my two favorite examples of that. But when Ray was asked if he regretted not getting residuals from Wizard of Oz, I guess he didn't get residuals. He said he got something much more valuable, immortality. And Rod Stewart was born in 1945, which means he's even older than I am, known as Rod the Mod. So we've got Rubber Legs and Rod the Mod to celebrate today. And I guess his family, <coughs> pardon me, but you're not going to catch anything off through the radio, I don't think. Uh, his family kind of idolized Al Jolson and collected all of his records and music and movies. And uh, Rod was brought up to uh, to enjoy all of that. He was a school dropout at 15 and became a silk screen printer. And he wanted to become a professional soccer player when he grew up, but that didn't happen. His hobby. His hobby, however, was railroad modeling, which is one of mine. So no wonder I like him so much. Uh, he won a Grammy for Best Traditional Pop Album. Best Tradition. They got lots of Grammys for just about everything. So that was an album called Starbot, Stardust in 2005. And he was inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1994. And James Brown called him the best white soul singer ever. And I actually saw him in person back in the mid 70s, I guess. I was suffering from pneumonia, one of the several times I used to get it a lot back then, but it didn't stop me from coughing at an outdoor uh, arena at uh, UCSB or University of California, Santa Barbara back then. He was also knighted in 2016. 
And I think I should take this night to take the night. At, no, we should probably take a break. So we've got time for uh, the next two sections. So stay with us and take care of yourself. Educated Retirement Radio here on your home planet, 1490K, excuse me, at KMETAM Radio, where I'm, I'm not suffering that much, but I just, you know, got a cold and it's hard to talk sometimes. I know most people around me are saying, thank God he can't talk, but, you know, we're going to try it anyway. Let's go back and finish a couple of birthdays. Sal Minio. He popped out in 1938, and he went away in 1976. Of course, star, one of the stars of Rebel Without a Cause, Exodus, Giant, even played, oh, Giant. By the way, just to remind you, and I'm sure you know, Giant looks like that. It's Giant. And... Uh, <coughs> they also played Gene Krupa in the Gene Krupa story and he was known as the Switchblade Kid so he got rubber legs uh, Switchblade click Kid and Man, Man the Mod and, and no the Mod whatever it is you know but he was killed by stabbing he was known as the Switchblade Kid and he was killed by stabbing as part of a hate crime now, I don't want, well, you know what? I'll go back and say this. I don't want to put this together because this is not part of a joke, but his parents were coffin makers, by the way. So we're going to talk about one more thing mainly, and that is on this day in history, you call Jay to find out information about the reverse mortgage. And congratulations for doing that, 866-955-2233, 866-955-2233. Get yourself just some knowledge. On this day in history, Metropolis premiered in Berlin in 1927, directed by Fritz Lang, who also did First Woman on the Moon, featuring the first countdown on film. Yeah, it was silent. But it had the numbers counting down, and that's the first time, and I think as far as NASA and everybody else, they got excited about countdowns because they learned it there. Uh, let me just show you Maria from... Now, Maria was a real woman, but she was also a machine, a robot, if you will. And most of you probably have seen that movie. But uh, if you haven't, you should. And H.G. Wells said he hated the film. He thought it was silly. I, on the other hand, liked it a lot. So, uh, I don't know. Have you ever tried reading H.G. Wells? It's, it's kind of awkward for me. So, so there. Had great special effects for its time. And uh, even now, it looks great. And that kind of reminds me that we lost Sid Mead about a week ago or so. Uh, they call him a futurist. I guess he's a designer. Uh, his most known claim to fame would probably be Blade Runner. Although, anybody attached with Blade Runner, that's Blade Runner. That's usually the number one thing they were attached to. But uh, we're sorry to see him go. Now, Metropolis had a music connection, too. There was an alternative soundtrack when the film was restored in 1984. And uh, with that restoration, with uh, Freddie Mercury, Pat Benatar, Adam Ant, and Loverboy, I think we're all on that. And uh, other people praised music praised the film with their own music by Queen 
Madonna and Kraftwerk, which I just played the Kraftwerk album of that before we went on the air. So that represents a science fiction view of class warfare and differences between those classes. Same kind of thing as I mentioned in the movie I thought was incredible, Parasite, last week. Same kind of uh, thing, but with a much different ending. Speaking of ending, I will end my part of the program right now. And, uh, oh, here's the Kraftwerk album as I sign off. Uh, I found it amongst a thousand other albums that I hadn't opened yet, so so be it. But it's got, uh, it's got Metropolis as one of the songs. So let me just uh, sign off with this. Hang on for Randy and the crowd. And I really appreciate all your time. Have yourself a great weekend and take care. Thank you.